game. When rampaging the pyro had been more damage. If you rampage the pyro and then you also play whirlwind. I mean it depends on the spells you play I guess. Um, you could actually end up killing off the frothing if you play too many. So that was my concern. If I play wild, if I play rampage on pyro and also play whirlwind, it means I can't actually play whirlwind. That means I need to play battle rage instead. Um, there's a possibility that I kill off the frothing. This is fine. <coughs> Agro shaman is cheap. Agro shaman is cheap, but just because you want to play a cheap deck doesn't mean you have to play a brainless deck. All right. Yes, there is some skill involved in playing Agro shaman, but the way I like to describe it of what how to add layers of complexity to a deck is um, that's a good top deck. If you take a if you take a deck, just say you know what we're playing against right now, it's Tempo Dragon Warrior. It basically all you need is the skills that you would need for playing arena. You play on curve, you build a deck that has a good curve, and you make trades when you need a trade. You go face when you need to go face, and that's it. All right, but then add. Uh, the added layer with combo decks is card draw, because they have really good card draw engines. So you take Miracle Rogue, you take Freeze Mage, you take Combo Warrior. All of them have good card draw mechanisms, and then that's what makes it hard. When do you when do you go for card draw? And you still have to do you still have to do the whole board trade and and uh, play on curve, all of that. But then on top of that, you need to work in when do you draw cards, and that's why Warlock is also one of the more complex classes because their life their their hero power life tap is so powerful and it's hard to like when you play zoo people may think zoo is an easy deck but actually to play it perfectly it's hard it's hard to know when do you tap when do you not tap when do you when do you uh and placement too minion placement is so important that one there's not so much minion placement in this particular deck but shaman zoo um there's probably some other stuff that minion placement actually matters Assuming turn 4, he has Corcoran. Corcoran's not that great. Um, Ravaging Ghoul's not that good if we have an Ackley on board. So I think we want to do this to make Ravaging Ghoul kind of sucky. And to play around Corcoran, I should do this too. So he can't just Corcoran into my Acolyte for free. Yeah, we'll do this. This is fine. I feel like I should probably cash in on the health here, in case he plays Ravaging. Okay. We have another Acolyte and Ravaging Ghoul next turn, which cl which cleans us off. So Corruptor. It sets up so the, the Ravaging Ghoul trades with this. What's the other option? One option is Slam, Icar, Ravaging Ghoul. Is that better ever? Clears the board. It just leaves out an activator for the acolyte, which I kind of wanted to activate. Let's just do this. I like this a little bit better. Otherwise, I don't see a. If I use up Slam and Icker, I don't know how to get this card draw. How do you come back from being behind with this deck? Usually, patron. Like against a deck like this that doesn't have an answer to patron. That's what we're going for. Zoo's not a deck, it's a hero power. <laughs> what do you mean? Zoo is a deck. Lock dropping that knowledge. This is meant to be an educational stream, right? It's not just a drinking stream. Okay. Alright. So we got the patrons. Great. We have the executes. Also, very good tempo play. Mm, I don't have whirlwind effects though, so I think I need to cycle the slam. There's pyro, All right? So that's whirlwind effects. 
so... Is there a world where I just drop both executes here? Seems kind of weird. Because my next turn is going to be Patron, Pyro, Icker. I'm just going to play that. I don't have room to play executes. And I want to have a minion on board just as a, as a threat. So I kind of like this. And then... It's not his turn 8 yet, so you can't play his big stuff. The best thing he plays is Malkarok. And then we're going to deal with his turn 8 drop by playing um, by, with Patrons. Patrons are going to deal with whatever he drops. Educasa and Drinking Doc Lock. <laughs> I guess the only way he deals with this is uh, Ravaging Ghoul. He could clear, actually. He could do like slam or execute, hit, hit, and then and then uh, Ravaging Ghoul. That'd be so bad for us, actually. But hopefully he just has Grom. It'd be ideal if he just has Grom there. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Oh, he didn't have a dragon. Pog champ. well played. Alright, have a good night, Rini. Thanks for the host. Thanks for the sub. Really appreciate it. Everyone, get in here. Glad I found your stream through the exposure you got with your free-to-play on Reddit. Good stuff. Keep it up. Thanks, uh, Epicus. Glad you liked the stream. If you guys want to counter the whole uh, commanding shout OTK, try out try out that, as I said, Tempo Dragon Warrior, which that person was playing, probably is doing pretty well against the Tempo Dragon or probably is doing pretty well against the commanding shout list, which doesn't run patron. And probably midrange hunter. Play those two if you want to beat the whole um, commanding shout list. And also control warrior, you can try teching the Sagoth which is what uh, Navi Ut was doing. Try that out. But I definitely recommend everyone play Midrange Hunter and Tempo Dragon Warrior so that people who watch my stream and play my list can farm them while still taking advantage of the OTK. How valuable is Quantum Pyro? It's very valuable. If you can save it, it's awesome. Did you fin finish Budget Miracle? Um, I mean, it's just play Miracle. Miracle is already weak enough that if you do budget, it's just... I don't think it's worth it. Does Nino, Nazoth, Reno, Warlock beat that Worgen deck? Only if you have enough taunts, but I don't think... No, I don't think it beats it. Do I ever keep this? Or do I ever keep all of this? Depends on what I think the deck is. I don't particularly like to keep Armorsmith because I'm never going to drop it on turn 2 if it's Freeze Mage. And I just want, I just want more practice stuff than execute. How does this deck perform against Cthulhu Warriors, Armor Gain, and Brawls? It's fine. You basically don't go all in on patrons until you can get card draw from patrons. And um, with faces, you can do 60 damage. So you want just to keep them into 60 damage range, which doesn't work out all the time. 
There's definitely times where they can get more than 60 armor. But that's the... Like, you want to be able to pressure, right? With... With the Worgen, or like with this list, you can actually pressure in the mid-game with Patron. Because you not only generate Patrons, you get card draw. Um, there's probably some Reno list that runs that. If are playing against Reno, it feels bad. What was, it, what was I saying? Like, you actually have some minions to play in the mid-game to pressure and to deal even a bit of damage, even if it gets brawled, it's doing 3 damage here and there to just keep them into that 60, 60 damage range. In the other list, the strategy is you take as little damage as possible, because most of the time the only minions they have is Pyro and Icker, Ravaging Ghoul, and then oftentimes they're doing Commanding Shout, Shenanigans, and then everything will be at 1 health. So just save your Ravaging Ghoul until they're finished doing all that stuff, clear it, armor up as much as possible, and they have no other pressure, they have no other ways to ping your face and just get out of that 60, 60 damage range, and you win. Because they have no... they have one Morgan, that's it. That's their pressure. They don't have frothings to, like, apply a bit of pressure in mid-game, no patrons. Pretty easy to beat. So, hopefully people take advantage of the weaknesses of that list. Reno Mage Farms OTK decks, I'm sure. We just, um, it's because of Elise. So basically, we just have to take it into fatigue. We have to go into fatigue and not, basically, don't want to cycle much in this matchup. I don't really want to use my removal either. There's a couple big threats. There's probably Antonitis, there's probably Alexstrasza. Oh yeah, because of Forgotten Torches too. So they can just pad their deck so much. But at least we have some armor gain to try to stay out of lethal. Guess might as well get some armor gain here. Also just to make sure our hand isn't super full. Yeah, you. Crane is one of my good friends. Ask him if he thinks Zoo is a hard deck to play and see what he says. He'll probably say it's, it's a complex deck. Should be ice block, pretty sure. It's not counter spell because our coin tested that. Let's see if he has it. the Ali Straza. Novice. He shouldn't be drawing cards. Or he shouldn't be trying to draw cards. Oh, okay. Good. Uh, it, it might be Reno Freeze Mage. But the, the lease is a little bit weird. And he, he's playing it wrong if he's cycling. That's not right. So if he's cycling, that allows us to cycle a little bit too. I don't really want to cycle too much though. Essentially I only cycle if I need to look for answers, but I have execute already. Tell us about your plan this game, how do you plan to win? Basically I uh, wait until he fatigues and then I just punch him in the face. Is that how you win at life? Somebody's bothering you, wait for them fatigue, and you punch them in the face. Grab a beer for this drinking stream, let's go. Alright. I have to drop Pyro. Oh, okay, no, not necessarily. I can, I can just um, equip the second axe. 
it's fine. I obviously, if I really want to attack against Reno types of mages or freeze mage, I would put in Justicar. You just put in a Justicar. It basically helps them um, helps you not die until fatigue. So there's Ali Straza. Ali Straza. I could have chosen to face us it. It's not really necessary though. <laughs> you don't actually have to say that, Jazz. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to say that it's weaker. I'm just saying it's just not as. Uh... Not as flexible in win condition, right? Oh, that's a better faceless. Alright, that's what we want to face us. But then I need a way to deal with it. So, we're gonna faceless it. Slam. At the very worst, we have to slam Whirlwind Inner Rage. Yeah, we, that's fine. I guess I could just Inner Rage and Fireballed it. <laughs> Probably should, if I didn't want to draw a card. Yeah, or take any damage. It's probably okay though. Do I need to armor up? Yeah, I can armor up. Freeze Warrior! New meta, Freeze Warrior. You guys saw it here first, everyone take in Antonitis. Yeah, Fireball Warrior. And he's drawing more cards, that's good, so he just gets to fatigue faster. Do I just take this? I think I just do this. Seems okay. I don't want to waste damage on this. Because it dies so easily to the pyro. Could get the hang of your version, Shadow. I will keep practicing. No problem. It takes time. It's not that easy to play. So I understand that you may have higher success with simpler decks. I just slam this. I don't want the card draw. He's gonna fatigue faster now. And we have plenty of removal. We have XQ, we have Fireballs. Pop Chimp. OTK Fireball. Or if there's even not use Fireballs. And he keeps drawing cards, that's wrong. I guess he's gonna go for at least then. He probably is giving up on the fatigue game. How to determine it go? I didn't make it to the final day, but it was entertaining. I had a good time. How did you end up with Antonius faceless? Yeah. He shouldn't have enough burn. He's used up the Roaring Torch now. Um, he used up the Fireball earlier, right? Maybe he has Power Blast. He's gonna play the Monkey at some point. Oh, no, never mind. That's a fireball. Ice Lance. Does he have Frostbolt? Or did he use it up already? It's probably worth throwing the fireball at this to keep it keep this alive as a threat, so you might have to use even more removal. That's the idea. It's coming! 
And the more cards he's using up, the less good his monkey is. Oh, that's pretty good for monkey, though. Okay. Well, his home is pretty good. There's a Reno on the list, right? Kinda just wanna keep the flexibility of the weapon still. I'll just trade this. Um, I haven't seen Mirror Image. Frostbolt. Okay. Sure. So I fireball that. Is there any reason to make patrons? I kind of want to save Pyro for the mirror images. Because the other option is I drop the... I have seen a flame strike, but it's possibly got more flame strikes from the... from the Kabbalist tome. And then after he plays, also Patron is super good after he plays Monkey. So that's probably another reason to save Patrons until he Monkeys. Not too many legendaries besides Deathwing really deal with uh, Patrons. Or Chilma, I guess. Couldn't you go for Patrons? Flame Strike is gone, only Blizzard. Alright, Reno Jackson. Okay, there we go. He went for the Monkey. So now we go for Patrons. I kind of want to save the Inner Rage though for Morgan. Maybe I just take one card draw. I guess you could play Barongadon. I think this play Barongadon. That clears off most of the board. Ugh. Hopefully he doesn't have Barongadon. He pinks the Armorsmith off, so it doesn't seem like it's Barongadon. You open that can of worms, now everyone thinks to do is a hardest deck. Oh, you got two of those. Interesting. Running a bit low on cards though. Do I still have an inner rage? I think I. S no, I used one inner rage on the. I think I might still have a Taskmaster though. I think I used one inner rage on the Antonitis. I'll just use it here.
Like, so far he doesn't have an answer yet. I'm a little bit hesitant about going all in with the Wargand until I'm sure he doesn't have Deathwing. <laughs> really hope he doesn't have Deathwing. Well, he pings, so that's not Deathwing. Five five. Okay. So we saw tasks then. <sighs> Do we think he has a taunt at all? We have to put him as 17. Or no taunt and no heals. Hopefully he doesn't have a second Reno. Because can we Can we just go for it? Pop the block. And just assume he can't clear the board. That's one op that's one option too, and that he has no heal. The other option is just go for fatigue, but if he gets a taunt in the way, then we're screwed, because we have no more execute, so I think this is better. Just assume you can't clear the board. I don't have weapons and stuff, so it's gonna be hard to deal that one extra damage. <sighs> kind of screwed to Deathwing, but he's gonna start fatiguing soon too. So no Alex Straza. He may has maybe has a Reno. Tyrion. Does that save him? Kinda. Not really. Bog champ. All right, we did it. Somebody was asking me how how do we expect to win that game? Just try to play it smart. Try to anticipate what kind of cards that they have. Epic game. Glad you like it. If you death wings, you can just play minions. Yeah, I just have to, I would have to drop both minions, and hope he doesn't top deck something that deals with the minions, basically. That was actually kind of miracle. Well. It depends on bad draws from the monkey, or just ways that he doesn't get a way to deal with patron. But as I said from a while back, like what's the game plan? People are asking, why don't you make patrons? He's already played flame strike. Well, as you see, if you say patrons until he, we make sure he doesn't have any other things, because he did play Cabalist Tome, so we don't know what spells he got from there. So you just make sure you can't clear with spells. Is it bad that I have 25 druid wins? Why is that bad? That means you don't play Druid a lot, so that's, that's good. Locke, do you have a girlfriend? Are you into other genders? And you have a nice forehead, by the way, no homo. <laughs> Thanks, Courage. Uh, no, I currently do not have a girlfriend. I am reviewing applications. Yep, uh. 